a very serious play. It's about five minutes, and it's about an old man who wants to talk to other people. It's a very sad story. We did this last week in theatre in Oxford. <coughs> people liked it. It's very slow and very sad. It's called Uncle George, and Richard will play Uncle George, and Uncle Harrod, who's here, will play the flute as a background. So this is called Uncle George, and this is not improvisation. This is with the script that is learned. Okay. Uncle George. I am not well. I am not at all well. I read in the newspaper that it is good to plan for the future and to reflect upon your life. So it is time for me to think of all that has happened in my life. My first relationship, my first marriage, yes, I have been married several times, school, holidays, my first job, time to think of all of these things before they disappear from my memory when I die. I am dying, and I think of my uncle Eric. He used to visit my mother and me where we lived in Bournemouth. A fine old gentleman, upstanding, perhaps a bit old-fashioned, what we call a bit of a fossil. I wonder if my nephews and nieces will remember me like that. I had two opinions from doctors and they both said that I was dying. So I thought it was important to hold a family meeting. So I asked my nephews and nieces, they wouldn't all be able to come because some live in other countries, but I asked them to come to where I live in Oxford because I wanted to ask them a very important question. One of them came back to me and said, why can't we do it on the phone? I said, it's a personal matter, it's a very important personal question, I don't want to do it on the phone. Another one said, well, can we do it by email? I said, no, it is an important question. Email is difficult. I email you, it goes into spam, you don't know that you've got it, or if you have received my email, you reply, and I don't get it. It's all too complicated. So 
So they came to my small flat in Oxford on a Sunday afternoon at two o'clock. Sunday is a good day for traveling by car, and they all came by car from Sunset, where they all live, all in one car. Sunday is a bad day in Britain for traveling by train. They arrived at my small flat, which I've lived in for the last 10 years since my wife Madge died, and I asked them to bring some food. That may seem straight. Meals on Wheels, which has given me lunches for a long time, has now stopped because there is a shortage of money. And it's not that I can't go out to buy any food or that I haven't got any food. I just thought it would be nice if young people brought some food and it would seem like Christmas. Well, they arrived and I asked them to sit down and said that uh, I had this important question to ask them. But they seemed very keen to go through initial pleasantries, where before we get down to the main business, we talk about this and about that. So we talked about gypsies, about those who have no job, about the Olympics, about the weather. People in Britain always talk about the weather. Just three of them had come into one car, one nephew, because the others live overseas, and two nieces, my favorite nieces. I call them both my favorite nieces, which is a bit silly, but it makes me smile. So, three of them to talk to, and I asked them my question. And my question was this. I am dying. I am told I have not long to live, and therefore I want to think of the future. And that includes your futures. I haven't got a lot of money. I have perhaps 30,000 pounds for each of you. But my question is, how much would it take drastically to improve your lives? And what would you do with the money? What would you spend it on? I suppose drastic was a silly word to use because it means one thing to one person and one thing to another. But anyway, that's what I asked. And it was my nephew who spoke first. He said, Unc, short for uncle, young people's talk. Unc, he said, that's not enough to enable me to give up my job and to retire in luxury. Always one with his feet on the ground doing spreadsheets, that sort of thing. But he said, what I would like is to start a campsite in some really nice woodland with lots of trees, and I would play with the children and my family, and it would be a campsite where I would make the rules. I found I should be making notes, making other rules, campsite, woodland, well, £30,000 might buy you some woodland, for example, in Wales. In Oxford, it certainly would not. The nearest to it would be woodland at a place called Clifton Heath, which is between Newnham Courtney and Clifton Hagdon, both just outside Oxford to the south. This is to the east of Abington, just off the B4015. Currently on sale for six million pounds. Drastically to improve your life. Oh, he said, I think we're looking at 125,000 to enable me to give up my job, and possibly relocate to the south coast, certainly pay off the mortgage, and examine all the options. Examine all the options. When you get older, like me, there seem to be fewer options. You have lots of time on your hands every day, but somehow time seems to be running out.
I hoped the first of my two nieces, my two favorite nieces, would say something, but she didn't. But I looked at the second one, and she gave me a reply. She said, Uncle, 10,000 pounds would be enough for me, because with that, I would be able to learn to drive, I would buy a van, and I would start a garden business. That's all I would need. I don't need lots of money to go and try to visit long-distance friends or a parent or someone that I've met on the internet. Nothing like that. Also, I've got a friend, she said, who's always around my flat, who's got a tattoo on his head. He'd like to get rid of that. And some money for that so that I don't see it every day would be most useful. <coughs> Thank you for that, I said. And with that, they got up, ready to go, and returned to Somerset in the car. But as they got to the door, one of my nieces turned back and said, Uncle, you know what we'd really like? We don't want 30,000 pounds of your money. What we really want is for you to get better and to be the uncle who's always there for us, the uncle we've always known, our Uncle George. I was very touched by that. Love is a strange thing in some way. It must make the world go round. Anyway, it wasn't long after that that I read in the newspaper about a cure. A cure for the illness. And it was really a complaining article because the person who wrote it thought it was very bad that you had to pay for it. It was quite expensive, not available on the British National Health Service. But you could pay for it. It would cost a lot, including follow-up treatment. In fact, the total price was around £90,000. So I spent £90,000. I've got no money now, but I'm cured! I'm fit as a fiddle! 